And we are recording. The uh, meeting is being recorded by host of Got it. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Faces for Autism. <laughs> Streaming with love. Telephone, we are almost finished. Uh, thank you, Miss Outstanding Team. Isabella Freund for being my co-host. Thank you, Tommy C. And Joey for having me live, I said, live from Wildwood, New Jersey. Joey and Sloppy out to check it out. It's probably one of the best best restaurants I've eaten at in a very Best long restaurant time. down the shore by far. Oh, yes. Best restaurant down the shore by far. It's delicious. Chicken, what did I have for dinner? Chicken parm and uh, penne pasta. It was delicious. I strongly advise you go down there, Joey Ann's La Piazza. Uh, speaking of Joey Ann's, my next guest has actually sung there multiple times during his tenure. Uh, he uh, is here to tell us about what he has done working with his uh, sorority at Montclair State University, his performing career, and a whole lot more. Ladies and gentlemen, and a big thank you to Zach Taglioli and Brandon Tomasello for performing for us earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Zach Taglioli. Zach, thank you. Jacob, my friend, how are you doing? This is this is my second year, part of this uh, wonderful organization, and I thank you so much for for having me back and, and having me be a part of the team once again and uh, doing some great stuff to raise awareness for autism. So I thank you very much. I thank and I thank you for being here with me today, Zach. Uh, my first question, Zach, tell people how have you how did you get your start in the business? I got my start in the business when I was 14 years old. I've always been singing throughout my life. Like my mother jokes that I, I came out of the womb and I was screaming and that was me singing and vocalizing. <laughs> but I got my start really um, when I was younger. I did musical theater, um, children's theater. Then I went on to middle school and, and, and did just straight plays. Then I went to high school and it was really towards the end of middle school beginning of high school when I started um, performing locally at different restaurants, different um, establishments. Uh, the Patti Latanzi and Billy Carlucci show was kind of like a jump start to performing locally. And everything has panned out from there. And I've performed in Wildwood. I've performed in Atlantic City. I performed in North Jersey. I performed in New York. All and up and down the uh, East Coast, and it, it's it's been a real treat, and it's been fun, and, and now that I'm graduating college, I can even focus on it more, and and, and start getting out there and and, and doing it full time again. Yeah, and you've worked with <clears throat> some of our most famous. Well, they are famous, but they're not super <laughs> famous. Famous friends and colleagues uh, all up and down the East Coast, too. Uh, Joe Piscopo, Joe uh, Piscopo, Dave Damiani and the No mm -hmm. Vacancy Orchestra, uh, Haley Reinhardt, Landau Murphy Jr., Sal the Voice, a wonderful, fabulous group of individuals. Check mm -hmm. them out, though. Connie Francis, too. Oh, yes, our dear friend Connie Francis. And, she will forever be known as the woman who kissed my forehead and the lipstick still hasn't washed off. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Zach, next question. You got, you told us how you got your start. Um, we've, we kind of meshed as friends because of our love of the American, great American songbook. Mm -hmm. How did that start? That started by um, our friend Dave Damiani. We met through him, Mike Lopez. Mm -hmm. And um, we were at a show together and, and we were there and we kind of bumped into each other, but we really didn't get to say hello because at those times we're always saying hello to all these different people. But then we saw each other again at the East Coast Hall of Fame when Tommy and I and my girlfriend at the time and my best friend were working that. And we got to meet you. And I, I walk in and all of a sudden I see I see this little blonde haired guy with glasses getting kissed by Connie Francis. And I said, that's Jacob. That has to be Jacob. And I hear from across the room, Mr. Zach Taglioli. How are you? Yeah. 
Ah, yes, yes, yes. And I turn around and it's Jacob. And it, it, Jacob's just lovable. Anytime you're in a room with Jacob, it's always fun. And he lights up the room and he's, he's just oh, a dear friend of mine. And um, oh, it was nice God. to catch up with you. Jack, yes, it was. And you and tell us about what your sorority is doing this year. I actually have, have a very small part in what your sorority is doing this year. Tell us about that. Yeah, we still have to get in contact with you a little bit about all the logistics, but we are going to be working with you for the Field of Dreams. We're going to be all volunteering a day in either April or May where we can go out, volunteer, uh, help out any way possible with the kids and uh, have some of them be announcers. I'll sing the national anthem. And uh, the Field of Dreams is a wonderful organization uh, that, that, that Jacob and some friends have started for... Um, disabled children uh, who can go and play sports yeah. so um, and, and our our, uh, our fraternity is big in philanthropy we did a one-on-one -on -one prom uh, right before the pandemic that uh, helped uh, autistic men and women who did not have the chance to go to their prom go to their prom again in their 40s 50s 60s and 70s and uh we helped decorate the whole event. We helped chaperone the whole event and uh, any way possible. So getting out there and being part of the community, especially the uh, autism community, is something that's near and dear to my heart, but many of my brothers as well. Please. Uh, we've harped on it all night long. I've harped, it, harped on it for two separate hours tonight. Please, friends, if you can, if you can do anything... Be a part of the special needs community. Mm -hmm. I had one of our board members of the South Jersey Field of Dreams on during our six o'clock hour with Tommy C. And we and we talked about the importance of volunteering and why your high school age children and adults need to see it because sadly a lot of them don't get the clearest of pictures as Zach or I would. You need to go out there, go out there, volunteer. It's truly life changing. And if you would like to see Zach perform anywhere, he will be, I'm sure he will be hopping, skipping and jumping beginning this summer once he graduates from college. Yeah, we're going to be performing uh, some places, and um, I'll be at the Italian Festival in uh, Hamilton on July 16th, so that's a big thing that I'll be doing there with my musical director, Dean Schneider. So some great things in the works for, uh, for me over the summer, which I'm really looking forward to. And... Uh... Bobby Wright, I'm sure you'll get back with Bobby at some point. Yeah. 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 I, I hope so, whether that's at Joey's or whether that's seeing him at a concert somewhere. I know he's going to be a golden nugget in June, and I'm going to try to, to, to go out there and see him. He's just been an idol of mine, a, a dear friend I can call him now, and um, an overall great guy. And um, I hope he's doing well. I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't spoke to him, but... Um, Last time I saw him was in October at Joey M's, and he was still kicking butt, still singing out there, performing, and uh, people still love him. And, and he's a true testament of an entertainer because that's what he does. He does it to entertain, and you can see when he's out on the stage that he just loves what he does. So I take a lot of, a lot of inspiration from him. Yeah, and we have to, Zach, because... You know, I think I said it last year. If I didn't say it last year, I've, I've said it several times. But but anyway, long and the short is people like Bobby Rydell, people like Connie Francis, they are the last of a generation. You're not going to get a full-blown entertainer anymore. These people are the last of a generation. Yeah, and, and, and the last of, of a class, I feel. I feel like they still have class, something that we lack, even as a, just a general society. They have class, they, they have poise, they have training, 
something that that you don't need anymore. You you can get a a Zoom call like this up, and you can you could be a a, a journalist. You can get a a phone and start recording yourself on TikTok or Instagram and become famous. But they had training because they paid their dues. It wasn't given to them. And that's why I think all these people still look up to all these performers because they're of a generation where they had to work for what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah, they had to work for what they wanted, what mm -hmm. they needed, because I hate to say this, but the but uh, the generation after our Zach, it seems like they, and please pardon me for saying this, but it seems like the generation that are ahead of us, ours, think that things should be handed to them. And I'm sorry, you have to work for what you're being, for what you're doing. It doesn't get slam that you like that you have to work for it yeah absolutely and and, I, and i'm blessed that i come from a family that's like that and that have raised me like that but i've seen so many people uh not come from a family like that and, it, and it's sad because they feel like everything needs to be given to them now i i i i, I want and i don't know what it is to strive to want something, to work to want something. And, and, and that always upsets me when I see kids my age, 22 or our age, 22, 23, yeah, yeah. four years old, who, who don't know what it is to, to, to work and, and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Uh, Zach, last question. If you could give any, any of our entertainers, up-and-comers, because the great, great American songbook, 50s, 60s, 70s, is really alive today because mm -hmm. of people like me, you, Tommy, uh, C, et cetera. If you could mm -hmm. give any, any of the um, up-and-comers advice when it comes to singing and <clears throat> songwriting, what would you say? Um, Singing-wise, hone your craft. You can't walk onto a stage until you have trained until you have prepared for that moment. Business-wise, and just the entire business, know your people. Strongly know your people. Someone told me that once, and I didn't know what it meant until most recently. And it is to know your people, and know who to trust, and know who not to trust. And that's plain and simple. And you'll hear stories galore of, of people working together. I read tons of autobiographies I, I that's the only thing i read and um they all have a story of one or two three four people in the business who have treated them poorly and it's to know your people yeah know your people and know who's in your corner uh friends please 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 donate the i i know you've heard it come out of my mouth since five o'clock tonight, but please, we've had a rough two years. Thank God the pandemic's turning to endemic, but please, these organizations, they've done fabulous work. The Mosca family has done fabulous work for the last 20 years, all for us, all for your families. Thank you, Mosca family, for what you've done. Uh, friends, please donate. There, there needs to be more supports, more organizations, more everything. Uh, if you want services for your child tonight, it may not happen because of the telethon. See, that's why we're raising money. Please, please, please donate. Zach knows where I'm coming from. He's done okay. things like this. Please donate. And Jacob, on behalf of myself, my fraternity, my family, I thank you so much for having me be a part of this organization. It will always be near and dear to my heart, my friend. And uh, I hope we raise a lot of money tonight to, do to go to a great cause and keep fighting for autism awareness, my friend. Thank you very much. I will.